What's up again, everybody? This is now part five of making a game like Cannibalt. In this one, we're gonna increase the difficulty a bit by adding some obstacles along the rooftops, the top of our platforms. And if you don't know Cannibalt or just forgot, every rooftop has these randomly placed boxes that you can run into that cause your character to stumble and lose a whole bunch of their speed. So we're gonna take that idea and make a very basic version of that. But first, and this seems to be becoming a habit that I always forget something or do something wrong in the previous part and I have to correct it at the beginning of the next part. Um, don't worry, this one's actually not that bad. We just have to change one little thing about how we're calculating the maximum height for the player when we're generating the ground. So let's go to our ground script and go to where we're actually generating this ground. And this is where we calculate basically the maximum height. And if you remember, I said that we wanted to make the gravity negative because the gravity value was already negative and we wanted, for the purposes of this calculation, the gravity to be positive because our velocity was positive and when we're calculating time, we want time to be positive because in most universes, time is always positive. And that's actually what we want for when we're calculating our time here and here. However, here, where we're calculating the position, we actually want gravity to operate exactly how it's supposed to operate when the game is calculating the frames. This formula sort of pseudo simulates that, so we actually want whatever our normal in-game gravity is. So let's take off that negative sign so we can leave in its original negativeness, its negative state. And this is actually why some of our jumps at the end of the last episode seemed very close to being unreachable and might have actually been because we were adding on height here because negative negative is positive instead of subtracting as we're supposed to. All right, so that's all the cleanup work. Now let's get to generating obstacles. So the first thing we're going to have to do is actually create that box. We're going to create a prefab that we can use over and over again for it. So let's go ahead and create 2D sprite square. We're going to do the same thing we did for our player box. And then we'll give it a nice bright color, yellow. And then I can see now that this is being rendered completely behind the background. So now's the time to address this. I don't know if you noticed, but our player was randomly half of his body was appearing in front of this platform and sometimes it was appearing behind this platform. And that's because of the sprite order and layer here. So we're going to player. Well, let's see where our ground test is. Our ground test is at, let's grab our square. Our ground test is at a thousand and our player is at a thousand. That's why it was randomly flipping back and forth. So we'll just do a thousand and one. And then our boxes can be in front of our player so we can do a thousand and two. So that's good there. And now we can see it. And then we're gonna go ahead and give it a box collider, box collider 2D. And then we're gonna just change the box size of this, just again, for overall fairness of our player because they're not perfect again. So we're gonna go ahead and say like point, point six, point seven, point six. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna move it down because it's kind of centered. So we want it at the bottom of our box. Negative point two should be the right, yep. And then finally, we're gonna, and then finally, we're gonna create a brand new script here. We'll call it obstacle, new script obstacle. Okay, open it up. Okay, so this box is gonna be sitting on top of our platforms, which means they're gonna be moving at the same speed of our platforms, so. And a lot of other games might actually do this differently, but this is a pretty small game, so I don't really care. We're just gonna need a reference to our players so we can move with our player's velocity. Okay, then we're gonna go to our fixed update. Grab our position, update our position, move our position, <laughs> dot x minus equals player dot velocity dot x, multiplied by time dot fixed delta time. And then also what we can do here is say, if we're somewhere off the screen by some arbitrary value is less than negative 100, something like that, we can just go ahead and get rid of ourselves. All right, so now we can actually turn this into a prefab, pretty easy, just drag it over to assets, done. All right, then we can delete this box. And now that we're done with making the box and the prototype for it, or the template, the prefab, whatever you wanna call it, now let's go over to our ground and actually randomly generate these things. 
So for every new ground that comes into the scene, we're going to randomly place a certain number of obstacles, boxes, on top of them that the player can potentially bump into. So to do that, we first need a reference to our prefab. So let's go here. We'll say public obstacle, obstacle template. Call it box template, because this one happens to be a box. And then we can set that in the inspector. Ground test here, grab our box, throw it over there. All right, heading back to where we generate the new ground. We're gonna do it right after we grab, right after we do everything else. So I said we're gonna generate some number of obstacles, so that's gonna be random int obstacle num random.range int min inclusive max exclusive. Okay, so that's gonna be zero to, I want a maximum of three obstacles, so we'll say zero to four. Zero because sometimes maybe we want no obstacles to give the player a break. And then we're gonna iterate over this. First thing here is just instantiating the uh, obstacle object. Box, instantiate, box template. And that of course is the game object. And then we just need to put this box on some position on top of the ground. So we're gonna need to know a random, no, a Y value and we already do know it because that's the ground height itself. Go ground dot ground height. And the X position is only slightly trickier. We just need to know what the left end of the new platform is and the right end of the new platform because we're gonna generate the X position of our box on some random value between the left and the right side of the platform. And to do that, we'll use half of its width plus its position, plus or minus its position. I mean, its position plus or minus half of its width. I'm not even saying anymore. And that would be go collider size X divided by two. And from this value, we'll also just subtract one because, and again, this is not probably the correct way to do this, but we know that our box has a size of one unit. So we're just gonna take off that one unit so that our box is not hanging off the edge of the sides of this platform. So the left side is go.transform.position.x minus half width. And the right side is the same thing. plus half width. And then of course our X is on some random range between those two. And this is just a new vector two on X and Y. And then finally actually assign this position. Docs position. And that should be enough to actually see our boxes being generated. There they are, right where we want them. Nice randomness in the positioning there. There was zero, one, two, two, zero, two. Okay, awesome. All right, the last thing we actually have to do now is collide with them. And that's gonna be very similar to how we're already colliding with the platform. We're gonna do that in the player script. We're basically just gonna be adding more raycasts. And also we're gonna be doing this regardless of whether or not you're grounded or not grounded because you can hit an obstacle whether you're running or jumping because you can fall on top of one or perhaps you'd add something to the game later where you have an obstacle in the air that you could be hitting. In either case, it's independent of whether or not we're grounded. So just like we did our raycast over here, we're gonna have our origin, direction, and distance. So let's start by doing the same thing. Vector two, ops origin, new vector two, and we're gonna use the player's actual current position as the origin. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have two raycasts, both of them with the same origin, except one is gonna be shooting out along our X velocity on the X axis, and the other one is gonna be shooting down along our Y velocity. And having both of those allows us to collide with anything that falls along our entire velocity spectrum, so to speak. So let's go ahead and create those. Let's start with the uh, X. 
Raycast hit 2D, Ops hit X, Physics 2D, Raycast. We're gonna go with our Ops origin. This is just gonna be vector to right because that's the direction we wanna go. And then our distance is gonna be our velocity. Velocity.x and then multiply by our time step. And then let's go ahead and check if we hit anything. Ops hit x, glider not null, not null. Let's try to grab our obstacle. Get component obstacle. And basically if this is not null, then we hit an obstacle. And let's go ahead and create that function. Hit space here. Hit obstacle, obstacle. Uh, we're going to destroy it. Obstacle game object. And then we're basically going to take a giant chunk out of our speed. So velocity.x times equals 0.7. We'll go down to 70%. It seems about right for now. We'll see how it works. And then we'll go ahead and call it hit obstacle, obstacle. And then we'll do the exact same thing for our y raycast. So this is going to be our ops hit y. And the direction of this is going to be up because our velocity y when we're falling is in the negative direction multiplied by our fixed time step. And then this is going to be ops hit y and ops hit y. And that should take care of that. All right, let's see how we did. Let's hit some damn obstacles. All right, there's two. And yep, greatly reduced my velocity there. Hit another one. Super slow. Whoa. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, I made it. But then again, that could just be the game not letting me lose because I haven't implemented dying yet. Well, there you have it. That's us randomly generating boxes on top of the platforms. And that's everything you need to add just a little bit of random difficulty to this game. Now, I think there's only one thing left to do, not in this part, in the next part. <laughs> and that's gonna be having the player actually die when they hit the side of the platform. Also, since that should be pretty short, we're also gonna do some more UI adding a title screen and also a game over screen. So unless I'm wrong, I'll see you next time for the finale. And that's it for me. It's pretty damn late while I'm recording this, so now I get to go to sleep. Take care, everybody.